And now we will hear from Bruce Lundgren. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Bruce Lundgren. I'm with the um, Office of Advocacy within the U.S. Small Business Administration. And the Office of Advocacy is an independent entity within the federal government that advocates on behalf of small business or small entities. And um, we are independent of the Small Business Administration. We're independent of um, the White House. So we actually speak for small entities. And uh, interestingly, in, in this whole debate, um, generally people think about small business. But when I say small entities, we're talking about small business, small nonprofit organizations, and small governmental jurisdictions with a population less than 50,000. So many of these SDO, uh, standard development organizations, as my colleagues on the panel have said, are themselves small entities that we also represent. So we really um, have an interest in, in a, a variety of interests cut, uh, cutting uh, interests in, in this issue. Uh, we've been involved in the um, incorporation by reference issue for a long time. Uh, we, we host uh, many uh, series of roundtables regularly that involve environmental, occupational safety and health, uh, transportation, aviation. So and all of these industries are subject to um, or, or per actively participate in these standard development processes um, and also are subject to the regulations that, that com come out of them. Um, so we, we have been, uh, we've really been actively following this issue for a long time. Um, we were at the ACUS uh, plenary, we're at the NIST um, workshop on this, and we filed comment letters on both the Federal Register petition and the OMB um, request for comment on uh, Circular A119, and I'll, I'll tell you in just a minute what, what, we, um, what we had to, to say about that. And, and our, our comment letters, um, really tried to reflect the views of small entities. And there was, as I mentioned, there was this sort of a, uh, several competing factors here. Um, and uh, I should also mention that we took a delegation over to OMB, a delegation of small business representatives over to OMB and, and met with OMB and uh, had a very good discussion of, of some of these competing interests. Um, before I get to what we said in a letter, I just want to mention that um, there, there are uh, the small entities, so we have the the standard development uh, organizations, and I should say that uh, we had a, also had a delegation of the SDOs came over and met with us a couple weeks ago and, and sort of explained what these uh, presentations um, have just gone over, especially about the cost models and, and the participation and, and who's, who, you know, who is at uh, all of these deliberations. But from a purely small business concern, um, some, of the, some of the biggest uh, issues that we've heard over the years about, about this issue um, in the small business uh, concerns with the whole process is that the, some of the standard development organizations tend to be dominated by large business interests and by consultants and equipment manufacturers who have an economic interest in the outcome. And a lot of the small businesses are concerned that these standard, develop, standard processes are being pushed um, and they're becoming very complex to the degree that the small businesses have to hire consultants or purchase particular uh, equipment. So that's something that they have been very, very concerned with over the years. Um, so another, another thing that they're concerned about is the uh, processes are, are open and transparent to the degree that you can be there. And small businesses have been concerned that it's very costly and time-consuming to actually participate. It's one thing to say that these are open, but to send, a, for a small manufacturer, to actually send somebody to sit at these meetings, which and I'm sure all of you have been to them, they are very lengthy. Um, they involve a lot of uh, resources and time commitment, particularly to be involved in the working groups where a lot of the actual decisions are made. And there's a whole uh, give and take of a review of all of the draft documents that go back and forth. So it really is a, almost a full-time job. And all of the large businesses have dedicated staff people that do nothing but attend these meetings. And there are literally hundreds and hundreds of these going on simultaneously all across the country. And, and as my colleagues here have pointed out, across the world now. And so it's very, very difficult for, for small businesses to actually participate. And that, you know, that's something that's been a big concern. Um, now, with respect to uh, the cost issue, as I mentioned, the, there was really a, uh, a, a division of opinion about this. Um, many, some of the small businesses wanted uh, the materials to be available for free uh, as 
the, the new uh, statutory mandate requires and, and, and others. But others were very concerned that uh, this would break this cost model and that these uh, standard development processes, especially some of the smaller ones for small, uh, small industries, uh, they like the way they work, they, they, they function very well, and they, they were very concerned that this type of thing would disrupt that model, and they didn't want to see that happen. Um, and as I've mentioned, you know, many of the small, uh, the standards development organizations themselves are small. So with respect to um, the petition that was filed with the Office of the Federal Register, um, what our comments basically said was that there was no uniform small business perspective on this uh, issue of reasonably available. And uh, the standard development organizations want a reliable set of rules that values the services they provide to industry and the federal government. And the federal government should avoid actions that would jeopardize this community. Uh, and then secondly, uh, there's no one best policy for small entities in all circumstances. And because of the balancing of interests required, the Office of Advocacy recommended that uh, the issues raised in the petition on the avail uh, availability are highly dependent on the specific circumstances of each standard development process and each rulemaking, and that should be part of the agency's deliberation. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, our, one of our chief concerns is agency compliance with the Regulatory Flexibility Act, and that requires the agency to understand the small businesses that they're regulating and how much it will cost to comply and the alternatives are available. And so when, these, when there's an incorporation by reference, the agency is still subject to the Regulatory Flexibility Act. So as part of that deliberation, they should assess the impact um, of the standard on small entities and also uh, determine whether there was adequate small entity input in the particular standard that, that's being incorporated. And, and that, that should be a, an affirmative obligation of the agency. Um, with respect to the OMB letter, um, which was, is a similar letter, and we, we raised uh, similar concerns, and this, and this is the comments on OMB Circular A119. Um, again, we, we in indicated that there was no uniform small entity perspective on the questions of how to revise the circular. But there are significant risks to small entities if their interests are not adequately considered when federal agencies uh, uh, incorporate private technical standards. And what we heard from the small businesses and small entities that came to our roundtable was that they want a seat at the table when the standards are drafted and easy access to the law. And the standard development organizations want a reliable set of rules that values the services they provide. So again, we don't want to disrupt this, but we want to ensure that small business is actually at the table uh, when the standards are developed. And then uh, also with respect to the OMB uh, request for information, uh, that the circular should establish policies that will mitigate the risk to the interests of small business. And the agency should have, as I mentioned before, an affirmative obligation to consider and request comment on small business issues with respect to the technical standards being, uh, being incorporated. Now, the Office of Advocacy, I think what our, I could say what the Office of Advocacy's view of this whole issue is, um, our primary concern is that the agencies comply with their obligations under the Regulatory Flexibility Act, which is to consider, as I just mentioned, who they're regulating, how much it's going to cost to comply, and what alternatives are available that would minimize any negative impacts on small business or in other small entities. So uh, agencies should ensure that small entities were actually uh, participated in the standards. And some of these uh, SDOs, standard development organizations, uh, have been making uh, financial um, uh, availability of uh, financial resources, and some federal agencies have, to get small entities uh, to the uh, standard development processes. Um, and also, um, standard development organizations and agencies should be wary where non-regulated entities are pushing a standard where the standard does not, does not reflect actual business practices. And we have seen uh, instances and heard many complaints over the years where uh, certain groups are driving standards that do not reflect the consensus of the business community 
but, uh, in, the, in the actual regulated ent entities that will have to comply, but they represent um, other uh, political perspectives or economic uh, interests that um, are contrary to the interests of small business. And uh, finally, with respect to uh, the new statutory mandate um, on FIMSA, um, the new rule seems to contradict government policy to support incorporation by reference and, and to protect the rights of the standard development organizations. Um, and we don't really have a uh, consensus of small entities on, on how, to, uh, how to address this problem. Um, one issue might be that uh, either agencies are going to have to pay or develop some other cost structure, which the federal government is probably not very uh, well positioned to do. Um, one alternative might be a, a more uh, increased use of negotiated rulemaking, um, and that also is going to bring up issues about the uh, copyright uh, rights of these agents, of, of these entities, where the government comes up with a standard that is very close or nearly identical to what the private standard would be. So uh, with that, I will turn to my next colleague.